I'll say it again. Stop fixating on the Federal Reserve. They know nothing! When Jerome Powell, our rookie Fed chief, does the right thing like he did today, he's not somehow rigging the system in favor of the stock market. He's simply creating a healthy backdrop where the best companies can really thrive. Like I told you before, when you look at the stocks that have led us higher over the past five years, well, they haven't been fueled by the Fed. They've been fueled by pure human ingenuity. In the summer of 2014, the S&P 500 broke out above 2,000. Today, it hit 3,000. Was that all a Fed-mandated bubble? Jeez, I mean, the Fed... Federal Reserve raised interest rates nine times over that period. When the market was roaring higher in 2016, 2017, 2018, nobody was expecting lower interest rates. So please, please, please don't just focus on the Fed. Focus on the companies. I know that sounds crazy when you're constantly bombarded with all this bubble talk. That's why I want to break it down for you. Consider the 10 best performers in the S&P 500 during its run from 2000 to 3000. Number one is Abimed. This is a medical device company that makes teeny tiny gadgets that help prevent congestive heart failure, prevent death. They also make totally artificial heart replacements. Over the five years since the S&P 500 broke above uh, 2000, Abbey Med stock has rallied 892%. Could you have caught that move? Like, this was a pretty small company back then, but you know what? You might have known about it if you'd watched the show when we had Abbey Med CEO back in 2012. He was astounding. At the time, the company had just reported one of the best earnings beats I'd ever seen, breaking into large profitability when most of us were looking for a loss. How'd they do it? By building a better mousetrap, people, true American ingenuity, a heart device that was simply much better than the balloon catheter that previously had been the standard. Like I said, inventiveness, progress, this is what we're looking for. Abby Med gave it to us. Number two, number two is NVIDIA, NVDA. It's up 722% because founder, CEO, and all-around cool guy Jensen Wong is a genius with a brilliant team. Remember when we saw them? How great was that? They've got the best chips for gaming, artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous driving, wide area communications, and the data center. You really think this one was hard to spot? Come on. When a guy as crazy as I am names his dog after a stock, and that's what I did with our rescue mutt, formerly known as Everest, now NVIDIA. <laughs> you need to own that stock. Number three is advanced micro devices, AMD. Uh, that's up 706%. Now, this is another one where we've been behind for years on the show. I think my squawk on the street co-host, David Faber, has gotten sick of me praising AMD's Lisa Su, who's engineered what may be the single greatest turnaround I have ever seen. They're both from Queens, by the way. Hey, my wife's from Queens, too. Worthless. Now, uh, Lisa Sue saved AMD from almost certain bankruptcy, and it's now making chips that not only rival NVIDIA's, they're routinely better than Intel's. That's incredible. As someone who used to be an intel hawk, I am off the wagon and hitched to AMD even here after its monster multi-year Lisa Sue, not Federal Reserve, engineered move. Next up, hmm. Oh, this is a tough one. You might have missed it. It's called Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Is that the most obvious stock in history? How many companies have not one but two holidays named after them? I'm talking about Amazon Prime Day, which is really two days that we celebrate next week where everything is on sale and the prices are insane. Yep, over the period where the S&P ran from 2000 to 3000, Amazon stock has rallied 490%. Given that Prime has over 100 million members, this was hard to miss. Amazon has totally reinvented retail, and sometimes I think it's just getting started. Number five, okay, a little obscure unless you watch the show. I'm talking about market access. That's up 487%. It's a company that's bringing electronic trading to the bond market. We've had the CEO on several times and praised the stock many more. Market access is a great business, but it's also benefiting from the fact that money managers who need financial exposure love financial technology stocks like this one over owning banks. Even without that, though, it's a great story. Way back in the 80s when I worked for Goldman Sachs, we used to have a call around for a bunch of places to trade bonds. Now you just use market access. Better mousetrap. You know what's not a strange thing? The fact that Netflix is on this list, up 456%. Again, though, this is really innovation. I know people are worried that they're going to lose too much programming to all these new streaming services, but Netflix has an unassailable position. It's the new way we watch television. You ever talk to the next generation? As a cable guy, I don't want them cutting my cord. So I'm begging these millennials to let me coexist with Stranger Things or Narcos or Falda. None of which, by the way, the, and I looked this up before I came in here, were created by the Fed. <laughs> Six, how long have we been recommending Take-Two Interactive during this 425% run? The answer, the whole time. 
that's how long. I praise Theo Strauss Selnick and his team, which brought you the single most successful video game franchise in history, or maybe entertainment franchise in history, Grand Theft Auto. Ever since he proved to us that gaming was the next big thing, and he's right. And you're right if you listen to him. It's not like Take Two was hard to identify. I put Selnick on the list of top 10 guests we've had on this since the show got going 14 years ago. Remember I told you about fintech and how powerful it is? Remember how I've said over and over again that my good friend in real life, Henry Fernandez, runs MSCI, which is the keeper of all the emerging market indices? Well, if you invested in MSCI along with Henry, well, you're up 409% over the past five odd years. And Henry's not done yet. I don't think you, I, I, I don't like investing in emerging markets. It's too dicey, too dirty, just too, I'm, I'm too conservative, too risky. But I do like investing in the tools that help other people invest in them, and that's MSCI. Now, here's a tough one. I've said too many times that we're in the selfie generation where people need to look great every moment because you never know when you're going to be photographed. And that's why Align technology is up 406 percent because it invented Invisalign. The invisible braces let you straighten your teeth without putting tons of metal in your mouth. What makes Align tough? Because in a rare bit of total stupidity, I told you to take profits in this one because of newfound competition. Turns out the competition is having trouble gaining traction. My bad. Finally, at number 10, there's global payments. I've been raving about the payments processing business for ages. Hey, we just had Wex, a business-to-business payments company, on last night. We've had PayPal on endlessly. Dan Schulman, how good is he? Same with Square. Global payments, in particular, has only come on the show once. But it's becoming one of the largest players in the industry. And that's why it's up 352%. Fintech isn't hard to spot, people. They're all in your wallet. Global payments, admittedly, is harder to identify than a MasterCard or a Visa or American Express. Uh, It's hard to identify if if you uh, cut the cord. Don't watch me have money. The bottom line. The top 10 performers in the S&P 500 over the period where it rallied from 2,000 to 3,000 aren't mysteries. We've praised most of them repeatedly. As for Invisalign and its parent Align technology, do you know that 52 years ago, I went to Dr. Abe Leibowitz for braces? And guess what? In the selfie generation, it's time for a tune-up. Dan in New Jersey. Dan! Booyah, Jim. Booyah. Uh, Thanks for everything that you do for all of us. Absolutely. All right. My question is Microsoft um, has a buy rating, shows that it's somewhat overvalued, and it's almost at its 52-week high with a price target of 144 I was just wondering, is now a good time, or should I wait for a pullback? Okay, it's had a buy? huge, huge run. I talked about this morning in Squawk on the Street. I said, you know what, frankly, this thing has just been monster good, and I'm worried after this big run that it will pull back even after it reports a great quarter. And that is when you would pull the trigger. Not ahead. All right, the stocks that have led us higher since the S&P broke 2000 have been fueled by pure human ingenuity. So don't just focus on the Fed, for heaven's sake. Focus on the CEOs. Focus on the companies. Focus on the technology. Focus on the winners. And stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. <laughs> 